And now, from PAX TV Studio 611, your host, Richard Thomas. Good evening, and welcome to It's a Miracle. Tonight's show features several miraculous rescues. In each case, a human life is at risk. But just when all hope is lost, something intervenes on their behalf. I say something because the saving grace isn't always another human being. In fact, our first story brings us a most unlikely angel, a wild and savage predator that would just as soon kill a man as save him. On January 2nd, 1996, 21-year-old Carter Allen and his girlfriend Dawn left a New Year's party at a local cafe to make the short drive to his parents' home. It's freezing out here. When we left Walker, Minnesota to make the last 10 miles to my parents' house, the weather temperature was probably about 30 below with a windshield of a minus 70. What they didn't realize was that the roads ahead were covered with ice and drifting snow and that their decision to leave the safety of the cafe was about to endanger their lives. So I see Carter. How much further is it? Another three miles. We're doing fine. It's way too icy. As they turned onto a side road leading to his parents' home, the car hit a patch of ice and in the next instant veered off the road, landing in a ditch. Don, are you okay? Don, are you okay? okay. All right. The car was still running and we were stuck. I tried to go forward, I tried to go backwards, and we were just weren't moving. And I immediately just thought of what I'm gonna have to do to make it out of here. Oh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna have to dig. We gotta get out, we gotta dig, we gotta get some traction. I got outside and, and I kept on shoveling the snow away from the tires. And every time I would do that, the snow would just come right back down under the tires. So I just kept on trying and that was going nowhere. This is gonna work. The freezing cold left them no option but to get back inside the car. Even there, it would be difficult to escape the minus 70 degree wind chill. Their only hope was to get the engine running. But it too was frozen and refused to start. We're stuck. We're stuck, Carter. Oh. Look, there was a. You remember that house we passed about a half a mile back? Yeah, I thought I saw a light. Okay. All right, we're gonna have to try and make it to that house. Oh. You okay? Okay. It's too cold, Carter. I can't do this. Just right up there. Are you sure? I can't. It's too cold. Okay. Dawn was already too weak from exposure to the cold. And so Carter helped her back into the relative safety of the vehicle. All right. Stay here. I'm going to go for help, okay? Stay here. And struck out on his own. I took off running. And uh, I ran almost all the way. But when Carter finally arrived at the cabin, he was in for a bitter disappointment. Please, please. Oh, oh, sorry to bother you, sir, but our car broke down and we're stuck in the snow. Can you help us? Please. He was pretty much not going to help me that night. I told him there was somebody else in the vehicle back there. The car was stalled and there was a blizzard out here and it's pretty bad condition. He still pretty much wasn't going to help me. Oh, please. No phone. No car. No! Sleep no! In here. No, please! No. No. no! When I left his house, I was angry inside, but I, I knew that I couldn't just sit there and be mad, you know, get mad, just stand in the middle of nowhere, argue, holler, scream, whatever. I knew that I had to use all my energy to get back to the car. But Carter's presence in the forest had attracted the attention of another creature. From deep within the woods, he'd acquired a shadow, a shadow of something that watches and waits. The conclusion when it's a miracle returns.
While driving to his parents' home outside Walker, Minnesota, Carter Allen lost control of his car and ended up hopelessly stuck in a ditch. With temperatures well below freezing and a wind chill factor of negative 70, Carter set off on his own to get help. But the owner of the nearest cabin no phone, turned him away. No now, weak from exposure, Carter attempted to return to his car. But he wasn't returning alone. He was being closely shadowed by a wolf. When I glimpsed over my shoulder and I thought I seen something, but I wasn't sure because of the snow and it was dark and I couldn't just tell if there was anything there or not. Carter didn't wait to find out what was following him. He had to get back to the car and he was beginning to feel the full effects of the cold. I couldn't feel my hands no more. My arms were getting really cold. My feet I couldn't feel. My pants legs were full of ice. And what made me stop and collapse was I couldn't breathe anymore. Barely conscious, Carter's life was in grave danger. If he remained in the snow, he would certainly die of exposure. And even now, the shadow that had been following him was closing in. I realized it was a, a wolf. And it just came right up to me. It didn't show any aggressiveness or nothing like that, so I figured I'm, I'm not going to be aggressive to a wolf. I called him sort of like a dog. I'm OK. I'm OK. I just I grabbed it, I hugged it, and then I put my face right about where his neck was. And I breathed right into his fur. The warmth of the animal's body revived Carter enough to continue on. I got up and took off running again. And I ran probably 10 feet, and I turned back around, and I looked, and it was, it must have took off running in the woods. It was gone. When I got to the back of the car, I was really happy because I knew that there was shelter. I could get in there out of the snow, out of the wind. And I was happy to see Don was still in the vehicle. The next morning, a passing tow truck driver spotted the car and transported the two cold and tired young people to Carter's mother, Cheryl Allen's home. Cheryl Allen's place. Carter and Don, they came in the front door early in the morning. They looked cold. I I put him on the couch, I wrapped him in blankets, I made some hot coffee, I told him to drink something hot to warm up, and they were very cold. When Carter told his mother about the incredible events that had transpired that night, she was immediately struck by the significance that wolves play in their Native American heritage. It's been said that the wolf walked with man before, we were friends with him and companions, and now, to hear that a wolf saved my son's life seemed natural. It's a natural part of our culture. When I look back on that night, I believe that was a miracle. Being me in a life and death situation. Thank you. And then a wolf appearing, helping me through it. And then me and Don both making it through. I believe that was a miracle in itself. Carter Allen and his family are currently active in Minnesota with organizations that protect the natural habitat of the wolf.